Okay, welcome to the Top Gear tribute to our event. Two Nissans on the front row, but uh, both of the rear engine 911s of Osborne and Hammond got a fantastic getaway and managed, in fact, to um, exit turn one ahead of both of the Nissans, um, Mardenborough uh, and then the Stig. That's Hammond's car with the yellow rear wing, followed by Joe Osborne. Os Osborne certainly given uh, Hammond plenty of room to go into the lead. And then the two uh, GTRs uh, battle it out as we head down to the bottom end of the Nürburgring uh, GP circuit. They're then followed by James May in the Ferrari 458. Uh, O'Reilly in the uh, orange Nissan GTR. Then Shinju Tajima uh, and uh, Stokely in the Corvette GT2. We seem to have lost uh, Helios Grindelwald. He um, had a bit of an unfortunate incident at the entry to turn one. So the drivers now head down towards the hairpin. Uh, Clarkson in fifth place. Arrived here with no practice whatsoever, but uh, very confident that his own ability and his uh, favourite car, the AMG SLS, will uh, see him in good stead at the end of the two hours. But unfortunately, as they entered the Schumacher S, uh, Clarkson had a bit of a moment. Uh, unfortunately, that collected O'Reilly, May, Shinju Tajima and Stokely. But um, Clarkson quickly off to rejoin leaving the other cars to sort themselves out and uh, get themselves back underway again. Finally, they do uh, exactly that after quite a bit of paint rubbing and uh, no doubt um, exasperation in uh, all three cockpits. O'Reilly finds himself entering the Nordschleife proper about 11 seconds a rear of Clarkson and hoping he can make a bit of a dent into that uh, margin over the ensuing laps. Now we're back with the uh, the four leaders, uh, two 911s in tandem, the two Nissan GTRs in tandem. That's Richard Hammond, the yellow wing, Joe Osborne in the other 911, Jan Mardenborough in the white and red car and the Stig in the black and red car bringing up all the names there for you. So we'll just let you enjoy uh, some footage of this uh, opening lap battle between these four drivers. Now, James May was talking about uh, being very steady and consistent uh, throughout this two-hour event, but I've got to say, uh, having had the misfortune of the opening lap contact, he really seems to be uh, turning it on in a way that we don't often see uh, Captain Slow actually turning it on, as he really gets this uh, 458 uh, bent to his will. That's our four leaders now down at the bottom of the old mill. Hammond holding station in first place and uh, the little fella is driving out of his skin today. Got to be feeling a bit of pressure though with a sort of talent, the calibre of driver that's behind him. And now Jeremy approaches uh, the old mill himself, uh, totally oblivious to the trail of destruction he's left behind him no doubt as he heads off into the, uh, the little valley.
we jump ahead now to uh, the end of lap two as uh, Jeremy approaches the uh, the scene of his earlier travail, uh, the Schumacher S, and we uh, wait to see whether or not he's uh, figured out how to approach this now. And oh, oops, same mistake again. And this is going to bring the chasing cars that little bit closer as they come to the end of this lap. End of lap three and the three chase cars of O'Reilly, uh, Stokely and Tajima have closed up into a tight knit little group. And it's now coming uh, to the end of, end of lap four, beginning of lap five, and uh, O'Reilly is so close to Clarkson now that he can, he, can, he can see visually the distance between the two cars. Clarkson's couple of mistakes have just brought him within striking distance, and I'm sure in that car O'Reilly is just hoping for one more mistake from Clarkson, which would be a bit of poetic justice after the carnage of lap one. They enter the Nordschleife life proper, tight bumpy little uh, uphill left hand turn here we've got to be very very caref careful not to oversteer on the exit and then a very tight first gear left and they dive down the hill to take on a third gear right hander and start to get into a rhythm and, uh, and we've got a lot of blue smoke there and it, hang on is this a cheery toot on the horn and yes that was that was Jeremy And that's uh, Tajima and Stokely through as well. Jeremy's had a good lap and no doubt feeling uh, pretty good in the car. He's not in the heady heights of uh, fifth place as he was in the opening lap, but importantly, uh, for morale back at the office, he's still got a handy, uh, handy gap back to James May. Now, unless I'm very much mistaken, that's a carbon copy. That's a replica of his issue there from a couple of laps ago. And uh, Jeremy, no doubt, chastising himself uh, hugely in, in the cockpit of that expensive AMG SLS. And goodness gracious, that's, uh, that's uh, James May through. James May leading Jeremy. Let's uh, take a look at that from James's perspective. Now we're on about lap five uh, here and uh, Hammond is doing a sterling job. As I said before, the little fellow is just driving out of his skin. The, uh, the Solihull Slasher is absolutely flying here with his rear gunner, Joe Osborne, holding back the rampaging Nissans. Of, in fact, the Stig has got the edge on Mardenborough now. We, did, we didn't see that happening as they uh, tear along the valley floor here. And this is the last tight right before the long, fast section. Very, and, oh no, Ham, Hammond's lost it. Lost it. He's hooked up the right tyre on the inner kerb, spun the car, and got himself into all sorts of trouble. Well, look, no matter what happens from here on in, that has been an amazing start of the race uh, for, for, for the little fella. Good on your hamster. Unfortunately, just a little bit too much throttle with one side of the car on the grass, and he's uh, caused himself a few more problems. Uh, but uh, he's off again now. He's off in, in the chase in uh, fourth place. Now, without um, Hammond to protect uh, as rear gunner, Joe Osborne now is lighting it up as he really savages this track to try to pull some kind of a gap on the two Nissan GTRs. 
and it's starting to look like uh, drafting or slipstreaming along this incredibly long home straight is going to become uh, a major game here in sorting out uh, who's in front of who when we come to the uh, finish line each lap and this time uh, Mardenborough courtesy of having two two slipstreams the Stig had one car towing him Mardenborough had two cars towing him and he's given it everything and managed to get uh, get past both of them so we now end uh, lap six with Mardenborough, Osborne and the Stig and you could throw as they say throw a blanket over these three cars Osborne dives into the pits he's had enough of this wants uh, fuel and fresh rubber now we'll stay with uh, Joe Osborne in pit lane for a short while just to get a bit of an idea on uh, where the other cars are on track in relation to him and in fact uh, how far behind Hammond is a pit stop here for these vehicles is usually in excess of a minute because the fuel flow rate isn't huge and it's about 20 to 25 seconds to change all four tyres and we see there as uh, the hamster enters the pits pulls in front of Osborne but of course Os and, and in fact that's uh, Stokely through in the Corvette GT2 that's Shinju Tajima through as well and I don't imagine that uh, I think that might have been uh, Captain Slow coming by I don't imagine that he'll be far back behind these guys and now we run with uh, Mardenborough and the Stig as they continue their battle this in fact is the end of the, the following lap these two guys are going to pit as well one lap later than Osborne so they've completed a full lap in tandem there fighting tooth and nail no one gaining the upper hand and uh, you know what it's probably going to be the pit crews that make the difference here this is going to be the two guys uh, staring each other out in the pit so here we've got uh, a Tajima coming around as well he's also diving into the pit so fr frantic activity amongst the Nissan the various Nissan pit crews here at the Nürburgring and we're going to see which of these guys blinks first we've got the added drama of course of the 911 of Joe Osborne on a totally different pit strategy and we're going to see how that pans out he pitted uh, a lap earlier we're now at about the one hour mark halfway through race distance And I think I think that's uh, the Stig's cars moved first. I think the Stig's going to slide up a hand. I don't quite know how that's happened. It was very crowded there in the Nis Nissan pit box, but the Stig is uh, way ahead of Martin. But, but that's Osborne through. Osborne is through. Osborne leads the Stig. He's got a few seconds in hand there, but uh, these guys won't be stopping uh, for another six, seven laps. So they're going to have to fight it out on track. Here we are, a couple of laps later and the drivers holding the same positions Osborne the Stig as they're coming up to uh, the long home straight for a bit more drafting and quite a bit of argy bargy here is so uh, that the drivers all search for an advantage at the end of the long straight and a big big moment their big tank slapper for Joe Osborne but he manages to keep it together
It's another lap later now and uh, dusk is setting here over the Nordschleife and in fact uh, Mardenborough has, has uh, turned his headlights on but the Stig uses a unique uh, light sensing form of skin to decide when his headlights are required and he hasn't in fact switched his on yet but Mardenborough has made it around Osborne the Stig hasn't made it around Osborne as yet End of a lap 11 now and Osborne uh, peels off into the pits again on a different strategy stopping one lap earlier than the Nissans. Mardenborough leads the Stig as they head out to complete uh, lap 12 and now as we're finishing lap 12 a dusk is really setting uh, here over the Nordschleife and all cars have their headlights on. Mardenborough will again we expect will again lead uh, the Stig into the pit boxes for their final stop this will be a splash and dash in the final stop of the race. A hell of a battle here really between these two Nissan GTR drivers. Uh, Jan Mardenborough, a sim racing alien who got his real life uh, racing gig through the GT Academy versus the Stig, an actual alien. And uh, Mardenborough we, we heard uh, was uh, intensely interested as the Stig was unboxed on arrival here at the track trying to pick up any clues that he possibly could. This is now Osborne um, arriving at the end of the lap. Uh, the two Nissans still in the pits. Osborne will be passing them by any moment to um, potentially take over uh, a P1 once again. And if I'm correct, that's, uh, yes, that's Mardenborough who's leading the SIG out and Osborne through. We, we basically have a, a photo replay uh, of uh, what occurred on the previous stop. So we have Osborne plays Mardenborough, plays the Stig. And how did that occur? This time, uh, you yeah, know, in fact, uh, the Stig got moving, but Mardenborough got moving a moment later and managed to head him off at the pass. Now this is the final lap, lap 14. We're riding on board momentarily with uh, Jan Mardenborough and you've got a feel for this guy. I mean, what kind of pressure is this? He's got the stig on his gearbox, identical cars, identical strategy, and he's sitting there thinking, what can I do to crack this guy? And of course, the, uh, the answer is nothing because the stig doesn't think, he just does. The two of them, however, have got another problem. They've got to get past uh, Joe Osborne, who is still holding the lead, having pitted a lap earlier. So uh, held them at bay for one lap around the, uh, the Nordschleife 24 hour circuit. But this is the money shot. This is the final lap and we're in for a battle royal between these, t these three drivers. The campfires are burning literally uh, inside the uh, carousel as the three drivers approach. Osborne holding uh, first place, Mardenborough second place, the Stig third place. The podium is clearly decided. It's just now a case of which step. And uh, I don't think either, any one of these three guys is prepared to compromise.
You can understand